Unit 12, part 5. So we're now up to section 4 of Clank's text, starting on 233, on symbolizing categorical propositions. <clears throat> and this is where we get to the actual logical form of our four different types of categoricals. Okay, so following her, I will start with the um, particular inclusion exclude inclusion and exclusion, that is the I and the O form, and things like some Australians are surfers, some Australians are not surfers. All right, so those two have the word some in them, right? a particular inclusion and exclusion, pretty clear that they're going to require the use of the existential quantifier, right? And that's also quite clear from our Venn diagrams from, for each of these propositions, right? Some Australians are surfers, we put an X there to indicate that there is at least one that is both an Australian and a surfer. In fact, that's me actually reading the logical form of the diagram, which is what this whole transition from section three to four is about. You've got the Venn diagrams of the propositions, and you should be able to read the logical form of the Venn diagrams. Some Australians are surfers, what are you saying? You're saying that there is at least one amongst the Australians that is also a surfer. That's what it is to say some Australians are surfers, right? There's one in this section that is included in both the subject class and the predicate class. That's particular inclusion. The logical form of this is, um, right, there is at least one, so that's going to get the existential quantifier, and I'm saying that it is both Australian and a surfer, right? So the logical form is there exists an X such that both X is Australian and X is a surfer. Um, see this one a bit clearer here, right? There exists an X, and note, and as she, as Clank stresses, um, we must have both propositional functions um, bound by the quantifier. There exists an X such that X, you know, when you have this logic form, so just looking at this symbols, right, how do you read this? As I've been stressing, stress a lot in unit 11, um, you read this as there exists an X such that, what do I say next? Okay, I'm saying that there exists an X such that, okay, what are quantifier statements? Quantifier statements are statements that tell you of how many things a certain propositional function is true. Now, the propositional function of which I'm saying there is at least one of them for which the propositional function is true is here uh, the whole complex propositional function AX and SX, right? So I read this as this, there exists an X such that both X is Australian and X is a surfer. Um, now, picking up on something I did stress and talked about quite a bit in lectures for Unit 11, um, it's very important to understand the, when I was talking about uh, bound variables, free versus bound variables, the scope of a variable and so on from unit 11. It's important you read, you read this, you, you, you understand, okay, so these variables within this propositional function are both bound by this quantifier, right? Because what does this quantifier bind? Right? What is the scope of this quantifier? Um, it's the first legal formula, uh, saying this determines the scope of negation. Right? I put my hand over here. When I get to my first legal formula, I have gotten to the end of the scope of the quantifier. Open brackets, so I'm not done until I've closed the brackets. Close brackets, so the scope of this quantifier is all the way over here. Point being, the this x, this, this x attached to sx, x is a surfer, is also bound by the quantifier, and also as well as x in x is Australian, ax. Okay, so this means that the um, these x's refer back to the quantifier the way a pronoun refers back to a subject in Dan is Australian and Dan is happy, right? So you have to, so pay attention to how you read this and how your reading of this formula begins, right? There exists some one x such that 
everything I say is true of this particular individual, right? This particular one x. There exists some one individual x such that these two things are true of it, right? It is a conjunction. The propositional function of which I'm saying there is at least is true of at least one thing in this quantifier statement um, is a conjunction. The propositional function is a conjunction. So I'm saying, what is a conjunction? Conjunction is when you say these two things are true. Mm and mm. Right? There exists some one x such that this x is this one x is an Australian, and also this same one x is a surfer. Okay. So <coughs> this is me sort of explicating something important Clegg says here on 234. Um, she's explaining why the logical form of the I proposition, the particular inclusion, is precisely this. Okay. So 234, fourth paragraph. The use of the parentheses around the propositional function is essential to the correct symbolization of categorical sentences. Um, including parentheses extends the scope of the quantifier to the end of the formula so that each x is bound by the quantifier falls within its scope. This is important because in the I proposition, there exists an x, so we have ax and sx, for instance, we want to say that there is some one object that is both a and s, right? Um, the fact that both ax and sx both fall within the scope of the same quantifier is what guarantees that the x that is a is the same x that is s. This is because a variable that falls within the scope of a quantifier refers back, in some sense, to that quantifier, much as a pronoun, such as it, refers back to the noun. Um, so if they're both within the scope of the quantifier, then both x's have the same referent. We can, so that we can say that it's the very same object that has both the properties A and S. The very same object, right? There exists some one X which is both A and S. That's what you're saying. That's what you need to, that's what you need for this. She goes on to explain how wrong it is to not have the brackets, right? To try and have uh, something like, right? if you were to try to have this like this, as she explained, this says something weird, right? Right? <coughs> Here, right, this is going to be wrong, cross for wrong. What does this say? This is the scope of this quantifier.